if we manage to do it, Manda will guide you for the calculations. But if not, then for the following lessons, then uh, we will try to do the example questions. Okay, so Manda show you first, yeah, for the, hold on a second. The, the, the notes for chapter five. Okay. So chapter five, Madam will brief first, yeah? Uh, everyone please take notes. Chapter five consists of four subtopics. We have 5.1 about guesses, mostly about the theory for the guess and the calculations for chapter five will only for chapter 5.1. Okay, and then chapter 5.2 and 5.3, inside CO, they doesn't allocate any uh, lesson for chapter 5.2 and 5.3. So 2 and 3 over here, liquid and solid, Madam will record the video, okay, and then we'll explain the terms and explain the details inside. Uh, but we're still using the notes over here. Okay, and then for the uh, lesson that Google made after the 5.1, we will continue straight into 5.4, the face diagram. Okay, 5.1 will straight into 5.4. Huh? 5.2 and 5.2, 5.3 is for your own study. But exam will still coming up for the chapter 2 and also chapter 3. Okay, and then if you look at the, uh, how to say, huh? if you look at the notes that Madam uploaded, is with some blank space. Uh, either yang di, either empty space. That means I want you to write it along with me during the lesson. Uh, some of the blank space over here, we write it together. Okay. And then over here, you will see, let's solve these questions. Over here, Madam put the questions all together. This one, Madam will show and guide you how to do it. Uh, we do it together. But for the exercises, it's for your, your, your practices. Uh, so for chapter 5.1, it's slightly longer. Lah. And then after that, we'll see how many we can finish uh, within that hour. Okay. Uh, and then we will have the chapter 5.2 and 5.3. Also, some space for you to fill in. So you have to look at your uh, video. But we're doing that one. Okay. So let's just start with chapter 5.1 for the guess. So we want to explain the basic assumption of kinetic molecular theory. Basic assumption, or sometimes you will see a postulate. If you still remember what postulate means, yeah? the basic assumption. Okay. And then we want to define what, what is a Boyce law, a Charles law, an Avogadro's law. We want to sketch and interpret this law. And we want to perform calculations involving gas law and idea gas equation. So today, let's uh, see, uh, we will just focus on A, B, C only. So we'll come back to the learning outcomes later on. Okay, so five of these is your postulate related to kinetic molecular theory. You must remember five of these uh, because uh, an idea guess will, will need to follow these postulates. Uh, so the first postulate says that all your gas particle, doesn't matter, it's molecule, atoms, or ion, they are always in constant and random motion, uh, constant movement, random movement. So they are frequently colliding with each other with the wall of your container. Okay, so this is your first postulate. And the second postulate says the collisions between gas particles are elastic. So when you want to describe it, you cannot just say co a collision is elastic. Cannot. You must mention collision between what? Uh, collision between gas particles are elastic. Uh, first one also the same. You cannot keep, uh, say constant random motion, full stop. You have, have to mention what is the things that are in constant and random motion. Gas particle. Uh, gas particle in constant and random motion. Then number three, we have volume of the gas particle is negligible. Ah, so volume of what? Is it volume? Volume ada dua jenis eh? Ada volume container or volume of the gas particle. So in this postulate, we are talking about volume of the gas particle is negligible. Another word for negligible is it can be ignored. It is less important. 
it is less significant. Oh, so you can straight away ignore it. Ah, uh, boleh abaikan, negligible. Please learn about the spelling. Okay, so the gas particle are extremely, extremely small compared to volume of container. So let's say this is my container. I have a glass vessel. Ah, the volume is very big, but the volume of the gas particle is very small until I can just ignore it. Okay, so this is the kinetic molecular theory. We ignore the particle inside the container as it is very, very, very small. Okay. And then the fourth one is the intermolecular forces. Okay, or repulsion forces are also negligible. Okay, because we assume there is no attraction, no repulsions between all these gas particles. Okay, also very important now. So, let me highlight together here. So, the intermolecular forces or repulsion forces are negligible, can be ignored. And the last one, average kinetic energy is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. The absolute temperature means your temperature is in unit Kelvin. Okay, Kelvin, temperature in Kelvin. How are we convert from degree Celsius into Kelvin? You just add a 2773.15. Okay, contohnya, kalau sekarang suhu dia, okay, temperature is 25 degree Celsius. So, to find the absolute temperature, you need to convert by adding 273.15. So, it is 298.15. Kelvin. Okay, so here are th uh, five postulates of the kinetic molecular theory. So any questions according to these five? Ada soalan nak tanya untuk kelima-lima ni? Okay, Madam nak highlight juga lah dekat sini sebab ramai yang kalau tulis uh, written exam, ah, you forgot about this thing. So, I highlight the gas particle for you. Okay, between gas particle or gas particle, this one is the must thing inside a postulate. So, we say average kinetic energy of the gas particle directly proportional to the absolute temperature. Madam, yes. um, is it uh same as ideal gas like for yes. this, these postulates okay all these five postulate kinetic molecular theory is what we refer to the ideal gas yes so this is the theory uh if you want to jot down can also it refer to your ideal gas but we will mention about idea gas a little bit later lah. Uh, but you need to understand about the theory uh, in general okay So, yes, it refers to your idea, guess, yeah? Uh, any other questions? This one then, yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe that this uh, guess law is quite familiar to you, yeah? Because you have learned, some of you learned it inside. Do you, do you enter the chapter for this one in your physics? Ada masuk tak guess law physics? Pernah kan? Pernah. Yeah. SPM, masuk SPM. Yes. So it's kind of revision. So Madam will pass uh, this one quite uh, straight. Uh, I'll quite briefly talk about this one. But there are some key points you need to understand as well lah, in this uh, subtopic here. So first of all, Madam want you to remember what it means by a pressure. Okay, so a gas pressure is defined as the force, okay, causes by the collisions between gas particle and the wall of container. So inside a, a gas container, okay, and then you have a lots of uh, particles, gas molecule, gas ion, gases atom. Okay, so when it uh, create these forces between the particle and the wall of container, you actually create the gas pressure. So it's caused by the forces here. Or another meaning of your gas pressure, you can see here. Madam also put it inside the table here for you. Gas particle is a measure 
of the number of collision between gas particle and the wall of container. So it's either a force causes by the collisions or the measure of number of collision. So the higher the, the higher the number of collision, the higher is your gas pressure. Okay, so you must understand the term for gas pressure first. So we have three of these basic uh, gas law, and we are using four variables. We have pressure, okay, using the symbol of P. Ah, oh, we got pressure. Volume using symbol of V. Temperature, a capital, capital letter T, and then number of mole, we are using a symbol N. Okay, so when we are using gas law, I want you to jot down also for their units. Okay, the units for pressure is ATM. The standard one we are using, yeah? the volume we are using liter. Okay, temperature we are using Kelvin instead of degree Celsius. So let's say if the questions give you degree Celsius, we need to do conversion. And last one, number of moles, standard one, mole. So please jot down the unit for each of your variables here. Pressure, ATM. Volume, liter, or sometimes the MQ, both are the same, eh? liter or the MQ. Temperature in Kelvin, and then N refer to number of mole. Okay, so your basic gas law over here divide into A, B, C. A stands for avogados, B stands for boys, C stands for Charles. Okay, if let's say you watch the lectures video also, it will talk about the same thing. Now, based on here, compound can scale. So in Avogadro's law, okay, look at the definition. Yeah, Avogadro's law says that the volume of your gas is directly proportional to the number of mole of the gas present. So over here we have a variable v, we have a variable n. Okay, at constant pressure and constant temperature so out of these five variables two are fixed another two can be adjust okay two are fixed variable another two can be adjust so if you write in short we can say this volume gas particle directly proportional to n pressure and temperatures are fixed uh, kalau awak tak boleh nak hafal uh, definition tak apa awak hafalkan yang ini cukup uh, and then after that you can make your own sentence Juma volume must be mentioned the volume of the gas. Okay. And then after that, we have this one. Volume of the gas. Uh, sorry. We mentioned about the formula here. Yeah. V over N. The reason why we have the, uh, the, the symbol K. K is actually your constant. Okay. This K is a constant. So if we want to convert this symbol of proportional into an equal sign, okay, to form a mathematic equation, we must put it as a constant. So this constant refer to uh, different gases. Okay, different gases have different K constant. So we just need to rearrange so we can see V over N equals to K. Uh, so uh, pay attention to the symbol that you're using uh, whether you're using a proportional symbol or you're using an equal sign okay then for our boy's law the definition based on these four variables change okay we have volume of the gas inversely proportional to the pressure of the gas okay at, and it happens at constant temperature and constant number of mole so v proportional to 1 over P, or V inversely proportional to P, okay, at fixed temperature and mole. So if we put a constant over here, we got PV equals K. Last one, we have Charles law. So according to these four variables, we have volume of the gas directly proportional to its absolute temperature T. I uh, must mention the word absolute. It means the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so at constant pressure and number of mole. So V proportional to T, P and N is fixed. So we have this uh, constant K. So we rearrange back your equation into V over T equals to K. Okay, 
So if we want to do calculation, we want to compare, let's say, before uh, you change the volume, what happens to the pressure or something else? We want to compare two sets of uh, the values, two sets of experiment. Then we will have another formula. So you just try to rearrange that. So just now in Avogadro's, we have V over N equals to K. So let's say we have a before and after, or we have set one, set two comparison. So you're forming your formula Vn over N1, V2 over N2 for Avogadro's law. Okay. So we focus on Avogadro's law over here first, yeah? You are using the postulate, your kinetic molecular theory to explain Okay, the relationship between the volume and the pressure. So we say over here at constant pressure temperature, we have more particle inside the gas sample. Okay, the bigger the volume needed to avoid increasing their collisions with the wall, because if you increase the collision, you will increase the pressure, but we need to keep it at the same pressure. So we need to enlarge your volume. So more particle, bigger the volume. Thus, the volume increases with your number of mole of your gas particles. Okay, so volume increases with N. So if you look at the graph for our Avogadro's law, very simple. Uh, volume of the gas particles against N. Okay, volume of the gas particles against the number of mole of the gas particles. So it is directly proportional. Okay, directly proportional. So if we change again for the, just now is V over N equals to K, right? So equals to KN. So you will see uh, Y equals to MX. Uh, how to draw your uh, graph for the Avogadro's law. Okay, so the gradient equals to your K constant. V is your y-axis, and then N is your x-axis. And then it starts for origin. Huh? Okay. And then over here, we have the V over T against volume of or the number of mole. This one a bit later. Lah. We will compare three of the graph straight away. So for Avogadro's law, any questions using V proportional to N? No questions. Then we'll continue to Boyce law. So Boyce law, just now we say uh, the proportional is P inversely proportional to P, right? Volume inversely proportional to the pressure. Okay, so in our constant over here, we have PV equals to K. So that one is for one sample only, PV equals to K. But if let's say you are comparing before and after, Okay, or you're comparing between two sets of the gas sample, then we will have P1, V1, P2, V2. Okay, so in terms of the kinetic molecular theory for Boyce's law, we will first mention about the constant. Okay, so at constant number of mole and constant temperature, the smaller the volume, the bigger is your pressure because you will have more uh, collision. Okay, smaller volume, gas particles are crowded together or getting closer together, and therefore you have a greater collision. Thus, the pressure of the gas increases and the volume decreases. So, volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. So, as you see on the graph over here, you will see an inverse uh, graph over here. Okay, so we are using P equals to k 1 over v so p the ballet yeah volume of the gas inversely proportional to the pressure so v volume of the gas refer to the y-axis and then p 1 over p is your x-axis if you want to put 1 over v you will see a graph like this if it's inversely proportional then we're using p so this is the relationship yeah Inversely proportional on the top one, directly proportional, but you're using the 1 over P as your X as is. Is there any questions until this part? Let me change a little bit for for this. No, we do. OK. 
Okay, yang ini kalau V sama dengan KP, and then you will see an inversely proportional. But if you're using 1 over P as your X as this, you will see a directly proportional. Okay, so it depends how you allocate your X as this. So the pattern of your graph will change, depends on the X as this. Either you're using P or you're using 1 over P. All right, and then the last one, we have Charles Law. So just now we talk about Charles Law, we have volume of the gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. Okay, so if only one sample, V over T equals to K, the temperature must be in Kelvin. Please make sure uh, this is a capital letter K, refer to Kelvin. This is small letter K, refer to the constant. Okay, so if you are to compare before and after, we have V1 over T1, V2 over T2. So temperature, oh, this is another meaning. Temperature normally we just mention only, right? So the definition for it, temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy of the gas particle. Okay, so if you have higher average kinetic energy, that means you have higher temperature. So temperature always link it to kinetic energy. Okay, so at constant temp, uh, number of mole and pressure, the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy, the faster is the particles, more space needed because now your particles moving at high speed. You require more space, more space to avoid increase in the pressure. Okay, therefore, when the temperature increases, we have the volume increases at the same time. Okay, so volume directly proportional to temperature in Kelvin. So if you look at the graph, okay, volume against temperature in Kelvin, you have a direct proportional over here. But if you look at the temperature in degrees Celsius, this one is what we talk at absolute temperature. Okay, temperature in absolute, absolute. Okay, temperature in Kelvin, yeah, it will have a direct proportional. But if you got the temperature in degrees Celsius, then it will be something different. Uh, you look at the, the graph over here. The graph of volume of gas versus temperature in degrees Celsius. You will start at zero uh, at, at this point. Okay, you will start at absolute zero where we say the temperature equals to zero Kelvin. Uh, mesti start daripada kosong Kelvin. So, paling, paling senang, kita tukar dia punya exist jadi K. Otherwise, if I want to change it into degree Celsius, I must make sure it will start at 0 Kelvin. Okay, remember, yeah, 0 Kelvin equals to negative uh, 273.15. Sorry, this one degree Celsius. Okay, any questions uh, until this part? No, we do. No. Okay. So the last graph over here, we will compare between Avogados, Boys, and also Charles. So it also depends what is your uh, y axis or x axis. So say if we, we look at the first graph over here for Avogados law, and then if we have volume uh, over n, Sorry, uh, this one we want to adjust a little bit. Okay, there is a typing error over here. V over N, uh, this one is not V over T, V over N in the graph. Okay, so if you have V over N equals to K, so we know our Y axis is V over N and then the gradient and then the x as is. So it doesn't matter whether you put a volume of number of mole, it will still refer to the constant k. So there is no, 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 no uh, positive 
uh, slope or doesn't have any values. So k equals to zero over here, no gradient. Okay, whereas if you look at the second graph, PV versus V. So again, the same thing. If you look at our constant over here, PV equals to K. PV as our Y axis, and then gradient, the K, and then the X axis, doesn't matter. You put the volume or pressure. At either one, we adjust it. You adjust the volume or you adjust the pressure. It doesn't affect anything. Okay, so the, vo the gradient is still equals to your K constant. Similar like our Charles law, Vt equals to k. So y axis, V over T, and then the gradient k, and then the x axis, doesn't matter, you use volume or temperature. Adjusting either volume or temperature will gi not give you any reaction. Now, will not get, give you any uh, values. Uh, tapi yang bawah sini tak berapa penting lah, cuma nak tengok saja dia punya relationship. And then what you put as the y axis and then what you put at the x axis. So the graph over here, you need to understand lah, uh, how to interpret them according to the axis, okay, according to the proportional. So this one also, you can refer it a bit late uh, on your own, lah, do your revision on your own. Okay, so coming to this part, so just now we have talked about our laws, right? Our uh, Avogadro's law, Boyle's law, Charles' law. So now I want you to write something on. Otherwise, very boring, right? Listen to Madam only. Okay. So the after you have known about your A, B, C, Avogadro, Boyce, and Charles, now we want to combine. Uh, so let's say we combine between Boyce and Charles' law. So these two laws will give you your combined gas law. Okay, how are we going to come up with the equation or the formula for combined gas law? You look at the proportional here. So volume proportional to 1 over P. So I'll write it like this. And then volume proportional to temperature. So both of this law, we will start with the volume. Okay, volume of the gas particle. Okay, so say it's about this one. Volume proportional to temperature for Charles, inversely proportional for the pressure. Okay, so now we are using the symbol of the proportional. Uh, this is what we say the symbol for the pro proportionality. And we want to change it into a formula, a mathematic formula where it used the equal sign. So remember, when we want to change into equal sign, put a constant. So this constant refer to the K just now. Okay, so we slightly rearrange a little bit. So P, we put it upwards, PV. Okay, and then we change it into equal signs and we put a K T. Okay, so K is the constant. Okay, K is the constant. So PV equals to K T. So if you want to compare before and after using this combined gas law, then can no problem. We have P1, V1 over T1. So make a K as an individual subject. Uh, so if you want to see over here, yeah, PV over T equals to K. Then only we can make uh, one sample, two sample, uh, the before and after. So P1, V1 over T1 equals to the second uh, sample or the final sample, P2, V2 over T2. So this one is our combined gas law. Okay, can you follow until this part? Yes. 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 Okay, so combine gas law, we only combine B and C, boys and Charles. Okay, and then after that, we have our idea gas law. So try to combine. When idea gas law, it must obey three of these. It must obey the avogados, it must obey boys, it must obey Charles. Okay, so using three of this individual gas law, we combine together to get our idea gas law. Okay, so if you can see over here, boys, Charles, and also Avogadro, we have the same subject over here. We have the V. Uh, so, so put the proportional sign first, yeah? Volume of the gas proportional to the temperature and also to the number of moles, so it's Charles and uh, Avogadro proportional, T and N. And it is inversely proportional to P. 
Okay, so we want to rearrange, okay, to get our constant. We have PV and then put an equal sign. Let's say I want to put a K and then uh, N and T. Try to rearrange back over here lah. Uh, not put TN pun boleh. So TN, so let's say KTN, KNT, either one. So this K constant, okay, when it's combining three of this gas, we will change the symbol to R. Okay, this is our gas constant. And this gas constant, it has a specific unit. It has a specific values. So every time when you're using uh, the formula of ideal gas, you have to follow this R constant. Okay, so we change a little bit PV, rearrange a little bit to give you NRT. Okay, so K is usually, just now we use the K as the constant, right, for the previous gas law. But when you're combining three of this law, you need to change the K into R. Uh, so PV and RT. Try to rearrange a little bit. Lah. We got NRT easier for you to remember. Idea gas equation, PV equals to NRT. So again, we mentioned about the unit just now, right? Pressure, pressure of the gas referred to ATM. Volume, liter, or maybe we use dm cube. Uh, number of mole in a unit mole. Temperature must be in Kelvin. And then gas constant, uh, this is the value you, you need to remember. 0 0.08206. Then the unit is atm, liter per mole per Kelvin. Nak hafal boleh, nak cari sendiri pun boleh. How to say find it yourself? Let's say you now you, you have already figured out the equation or the formula equals to PV and RT. Okay, in order to get the unit for our gas constant R, you can try to rearrange this way. PV, okay, tukar subject, eh, jadikan R sebagai subject. PV over NT. So we know that uh, the unit for pressure, ATN, Unit for volume is liter, divide by mole, which has the unit of mol, and the temperature must be in Kelvin. Therefore, you are having the unit of this. Panjang tapi kena ikut. ATM, liter per mole per Kelvin. Nak tukar sequence pun boleh. You can change it. A liter ATM per Kelvin per mole. No problem at all. Uh, or you want to change it per Kelvin per mole, ATM liter. Also no problem. That means the same thing. Okay, but we will follow lah. ATM liter per mole per Kelvin. Okay, until this part, any questions? The idea gas law. Idem. Uh, kalau nilai R tu kalau kita cari nilai untuk Pressure kan. R tu kita ikut yang formula yang dia bagi dia. Yang disediakan tu kan molar gas constant tu kan. Ke yang kena cari? Mana satu? Untuk R? Ah, uh -uh. Untuk R memang constant. Untuk setiap gas kita memang pakai value ni. Kalau no, okay. Okay. Tapi kalau ikut uh, list constant yang exam, masa exam akan bagi. Uh, con gas constant are the dual value. So you need to take the value with the correct unit. So this is the unit that you must remember. 0 0.08206 is the use for PV and RT for gases. Ada satu lagi, uh, kalau orang tengok Amanda tak buka list. Uh, next, next week Amanda show lah untuk gas constant. Dia ada satu lagi value tapi unit dia lain. So, kita tak pakai yang itu. Kita pakai yang ni saja. Kalau yang ideal gas law pakai R. Kalau yang equation lain pakai K. K pun pakai nilai yang sama ke nilai? Oh, untuk K tak. Untuk individu dia refer kepada individu gas. Sebab dia law yang berbeza. Tapi biasanya tak, tak ada values untuk K. Kita hanya letak satu unknown saja to represent. Okay, dia faham. Okay. Cuma hanya R saja yang ada value. K tak ada. 
Ha. Kalau ada pun soalan akan bagi. Okay. So dia tak ada fix, uh, fix uh, K value untuk semua gas. Ha. Untuk satu gas dia ada K yang berbeza. So dia akan ikut soalan bagi. Ha. Tapi untuk R semua gas asalkan dia ikut PVNRT ada value uh, ada simbol R then we will use this value. Mm, Madam, yes. Uh, for the ideal gas law, uh, I would say it is like a ultimate uh, formula that uh, relates every every variables into this one formula, right? Mm -mm, yes. And then, um, can we like uh, rearrange it uh, like what we do to other equations as well uh, to compare and then take the ratio like P i and then P two like that. P r P two. Uh, uh, P1, P2, yeah, yeah. Can, 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 no problem. You can, you can try to rearrange. Uh, the one that Sue asking is if we compare two of the sample. So let's say you can arrange PV, P1, V1 over N1, T1. Is it what you mean over here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, no problem. So this is when you want to compare between uh, before and after or comparing the same sample but different variables. No problem, same thing. Like just now you want PV, P1, V1, P2, V2, or you're using P, uh, v, V1, T1 or something else. So similar, we can arrange this way, no problem. Uh, can I use this formula for every question? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, you have to refer whether the question's giving you that information or not. Uh, so let's say the questions only give you pressure and volume. Then why not we just use P1, V1, P2, V2 instead of the full formula here, P, V, and RT. Um, uh, so you need to refer what the question is providing. What is the information given? All right, all right. Thank you, madam. Okay. So I will stop until this part only. So following a lesson on Tuesday, I will begin with the rearrangement of idea gas equation. You can try. Ha, boleh cuba kalau kita nak susun kat sebab step mana bagi dekat sini dah. Substitute mana satu. Make siapa subject. Ha, so you can try rearrange the idea gas equation. Okay, for two of this column. And then for coming Tuesday, we will try the questions. You may also try it first before we're discussing. Uh, soalan 1 hingga 8, cuma Madam termis satu soalan. Uh, if you look at the questions over here, 1, 2, 3, straight away 5. Madam miss out one question, but no problem. You follow the numbers over here. Then we will discuss the questions here. Okay, is there any questions? Uh, Madam, so... The one that we need to submit in GC is only uh, the chapter SD. 4. Chapter 4 only, right? Yes. So for the question, for the missing question, are you going to edit later on or? Uh, no, no, no. We're straight away using that one. 1, 2, 3 and then 5, four, uh, five 6, 7, 8. Uh, Alright. Okay. So Madam will share the attendance link into your meet, yeah, over here.